Good morning, friends. I am Dr. Mali Gajan Karizdi. Today, we are going to learn morphology. A dear learners, first we will try to understand morphemes. The morphemes are the smallest or minimal units of grammar. Needless to add that the morphemes are the smallest meaningful units of language that are grammatically relevant. Morphology is a scientific study of the words and their structures. Dear learners, I would like to repeat. What is morphology? Morphology is a scientific study of words and their structures. Now we will move towards free morpheme and bound morpheme. What is a bound morpheme and what is free morpheme? Let us study the word delimit. For example, it consists of two units. There are two units, D plus a limit. Both the units are referred to as morphemes. Dear learners, there are two morphemes, D and limit. The first unit, D, is called a bound morpheme. Why do we call it as a bound morpheme? Because it does not occur independently, separately. The other unit limit is called a free morpheme because it occurs independently. Thus, a form which cannot occur independently and is always attached to some other form is known as a bound form or bound morpheme. Let us take another example, that of the word enthusiastically. The morphological structure of the word can be indicated as below. Enthus plus East plus Ik plus Al plus Ly. Enthusiastically. Here, the word enthusiastically is a free form. Whereas, enthusiastical is a bound form because it cannot occur independently. Enthusiastic, enthusiast and enthuse are all free morphemes or free forms. But in all these, enthuse alone is a free morpheme. It means that it is a word in its original form, which is sometimes referred to as a root without any affix. This implies again that it is incapable of further division. In other words, we cannot divide. Now we will move towards the types of words. On the basis of morphemes, the words are divided into three classes. Number one, simple word, number second, complex word, and number third, compound word. Simple word, a word consisting of a single free morpheme. I repeat, a word which consists a single free morpheme is called as a simple word. For example, play, lodge, accept, etc. These are all simple words. Number second, complex words. A word consisting of a free morpheme and one or more bound morphemes. As we have already studied what is free morpheme, what is bound morpheme. And here in complex word, there is one free morpheme and one or more bound morphemes. For example, play fool, dislodge unacceptable etc these are all called complex words the third type of word is a compound word a word consisting of two or more free morphemes here in compound word they consist of two or more free morphemes for example Play thing. Now we will move towards affixes, stems, and roots. Dear learners, I request you all to watch this video 
till the end of it don't skip any part so that your ideas of morphology may get clear and here i take this opportunity to request you all to watch my earlier videos on modern english structure modern english grammar this paper which is prescribed by our university swami ramanand tirth marathwada university nandeed this paper is prescribed for the ba third year uh, students as well as the students who are doing their ma in english at ug and pg at both level this paper is prescribed in our university and i believe that this paper is also prescribed in not only in the universities of maharashtra but all over india so i request you all to watch my earlier videos on grammar the link of the earlier videos i have given in the description box so i request you all to like watch like and share my videos now dear learners we will move towards affixes stems and roots a bound morpheme when attached to a form is called an affix i repeat dear learners we come to know what is free morpheme what is bound morpheme a free morpheme occurs independently and it has meaning on the other hand a bound morpheme which does not occur independently and so there is no meaning to the bound morpheme but when this bound morpheme is attached to a form is called an affix the form to which the affix is attached is called a stem i repeat the form to which the affix is attached is called a the stem which is incapable of further division is called a root root word is such a word to which there is no further division we cannot make further division of that word so that word is known as root word let us consider the morphological analysis and structure of the word unfriendliness here this is the morphological analysis of the word unfriendliness unfriendliness which is the thing unfriendly and there is affix dash n e w s that is affix stem is unfriendly unfriendly is again it is possible to make a division to the next level so here affix is un and stem is friendly again the word friendly we are able to make further division of this word friendly affix dash l y and here friend is the root word it means this root word is a meaningful word and here we cannot divide this word to the next level further level so friend is the root word of this word unfriendliness i hope you understand this morphological analysis we will see the next example now dear learners we will try to understand the types of affix affixes are of two types in english prefix and suffix the affix that is attached at the beginning of a stem is called a prefix i repeat the affix that is attached at the beginning of a stem is called a prefix and the affix that is attached at the end of the stem is called a suffix for example in the word unfriendliness as we have studied the structure of this morphological analysis of this word unfriendliness here un is a prefix which occurs at the beginning of the stem or word whereas ly dash ly and dash ness are suffixes for the prefixes we use 
dash at the end and or the suffixes we use dash at the beginning now we will move towards the types of suffixes dear learners there are two types of suffixes number 1 inflectional suffix and number second derivational suffix first we will try to understand derivational suffix derivational suffixes are the form or it forms new word from the stem i repeat derivational suffixes form new words they create new words from the stem for example man is a word and by attaching the derivational suffix dash hood we obtain a new word manhood as opposed to the derivational suffixes there are inflectional suffixes which do not form a new word thus in the word boys we have boy and the plural suffix dash s yes. but boy and boys are not seen as two separate words like man and manhood the main difference between the inflectional and the derivational suffixes may be enlisted thus now we will move towards the difference between the inflectional suffixes and the derivational affixes number 1 these perform a grammatical function that is they represent grammatical categories while the derivational affixes perform a lexical function in a sense that they create new words out of existing words number second difference words with this suffix that is dash es are not listed separately in the dictionary while on the other hand words with the derivational affixes are regarded as independent words with separate in entries in the dictionary number third difference word class of the stem remains unchanged as we all know there are two types of word class open word class closed word class here nouns verb adverb adjectives okay here the word class of the stem remains unchanged while on the other hand word class of the stem may change number fourth difference and normally a word takes one inflectional suffix on the other hand a word may have more than one derivational suffix inflectional suffix always comes last in the structure of the word the fifth and the last difference is i repeat inflectional suffix always comes last in the structure of the word no derivational suffix is added thereafter on the other hand derivational suffixes may be piled one upon the other or may be followed by an inflectional suffix a dear learners now we will move towards inflectional suffixes here is a list of inflectional suffixes given in the table uh, below there are three tables nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs for example plural dash s yes. for example boys it is inflectional suffix verbs 
if we add dash yes who is which is the singular present tense for example rides and even in adjectives and adverbs for example in comparative words dash er if we add dash er high higher the second example possessive dash yes or dash yes apostrophe or apostrophe yes for example boys boys past tense dash ed walk walk or work work number second superlative dash est great greatest and here verbs have dash ing participle and dash ed or en participle third form pp form writing or written now dear learners we will move towards derivational prefixes and suffixes derivational prefixes and suffixes are divided into two classes again these derivational prefixes and suffixes are divided into two classes number 1 class changing and number second class maintaining we will see in detail with the example the difference between the two is obvious there is a difference between class changing suffix and class maintaining suffix the one changes the word class whereas the other does not for example good good is an adjective the type of the word class is adjective good and by adding class changing derivational suffix if we add the class changing derivational suffix that is dash any double s we have the new word goodness which is a noun here the word class has changed good was adjective and if we add the suffix dash any double s we have new word goodness and that is noun so such type of examples are known as class changing derivational suffixes on the other hand the word kingdom which is noun is derived from the king by adding the suffix dash dom dam which is class maintaining in the present context means king is noun and if we add dash dom to the word kingdom we found a new word but the class the word class that is noun the word class remains the same there is no change in the word class noun remains the noun so such a type of example is known as class maintaining suffix here similarly we use the word two prefixes similarly we use the two prefixes an dash and en dash with the adjective able to form unable that is class maintaining prefix un and n able here it is class changing prefix that is the first one remains the adjective able and unable there is no change in the word class both are adjectives so it is known as class maintaining and word class or class maintaining pre uh, prefixes while the second one changes into a verb when we add en dash to the adjective able it becomes adjective becomes verb enable so here this example is 
known as class changing. Dear learners, and now we will move towards derivational prefixes. We have studied suffixes. Now we will move towards prefixes. Here, following is a classification of the prefixes. The negative prefixes. Un, dash, non, dash, in, dash, dis, dash, or dash. They are called as negative prefixes. The second is reversive prefixes. Un, dash, d, dash, dis, dash. The third is pejorative prefixes. Miss, mal, pseudo. These are the examples of pejorative prefixes. Number four, the prefix is the prefixes of degree or size. For example, of, super, out, sir, sub, over, under, hyper, ultra, mini, etc. The next prefix is prefix of attitude. Co, counter, anti, pro. The next is the locative prefix. Super, sub, enter, trans. And the next prefix is the prefixes of time and order. For, pre, post, x, re. And the next prefix is the number prefixes. For example, uni, mono, by, di, tri, multi, poly. These are all number prefixes. And the last but one prefix is other prefixes is Example, auto, neo, pan, proto, semi, voice, tele. These are the examples of other prefixes. And the last prefix is convergent prefixes. B, an, a. Dear learners, now we will move towards some examples. Here is a table which shows some common prefixes with their meaning and example. Dear learners, we should try to remember the meaning of these prefixes and what is the examples. For example, these are all in the first left hand side of the table is the table of prefixes. The middle table is the table of meaning of those prefixes and the last table the third table the right side hand of the table is the table of examples for example un non what is the meaning of un and non it means not for example unintelligent means not intelligent non entity means not entity the second example is in this. What is the meaning of these prefixes in and this? The meaning of these prefixes is the opposite of. For example, insane, dislike, like, dislike, opposite. The third prefix is im. Im means lacking in. There is a lacuna. For example, Immoral, moral, immoral. The next example of prefix is un, d, dis. What is the meaning of these un, d and dis? The meaning of these is to reverse the action. For example, undo, do, undo, grade, degrade, connect, disconnect. The next example is miss. Mal. For example, what is the meaning of these words miss and mal? Wrong lead. For example, lead, mislead. Nutrition, malnutrition. The next example of prefix is pseudo. What is the meaning of this word or prefix? Badly. False. Example is pseudo intellectual. Intellectual, pseudo-intellectual. Arc. What is the meaning of the word or prefix? Arc. 
हाईएस्ट और वर्स्ट आग न्यू आग न्यू द नेक्स्ट प्रेफिक्स इज सुपर व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड सुपर सुपर मींस ग्रेटर बियॉन्ड सुपरमैन मैन सुपरमैन नेचुरल सुपर नेचुरल बियॉन्ड नेचुरल in the next slide here again this slide is the slide of the examples of prefixes meaning and example sub what is the meaning of sub sub the meaning of sub is lower than sub human hyper extreme hypersensitive extremely sensitive ultra ultra एक्सट्रीम बियॉन्ड अल्ट्रा मॉडर्न मॉडर्न अल्ट्रा मॉडर्न एंटी एंटी मीन्स अगेंस्ट सोशल हु इज अ सोशल मैन बट एंटी सोशल अगेंस्ट द सोसाइटी सोशल प्रो प्रो मीन्स फॉर प्रो कम्युनिस्ट कम्युनिस्ट प्रो कम्युनिस्ट ट्रांस मीन्स अक्रॉस ट्रांसप्लांट प्लांट ट्रांसप्लांट एक्स द मीनिंग ऑफ एक्स इज फॉर्मर फॉर्मर Prime Prime Minister, ex Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister, re, re means again, again, new, renew, renew, we have to renew, uni, mono, what is the meaning of uni, mono, that is one, for example, unilateral, monologue, buy and die, means two, For example, bilingual. Lingual means language. Bilingual means two languages or more than two languages. Old, de old. Poly, multi means many. Polytechnic, polyclinic, multinational. Here again in this third slide of this example. here are the examples of prefix neo what is the meaning of neo neo means new revived neo classical classical neo classical rich neo rich pan means all worldwide all over pan india means all over india proto proto means first original for example prototype semi means half circle full circle semi circle half circle vice deputy vice president president vice president tele tele means distant vision television b b means make friend be friend make a friend be friend un un provide with power empower so dear learners we have studied the prefixes now we will move towards derivational suffixes and these are the examples of derivational suffixes the first suffix is noun forming suffix it means if we add these suffixes to the root word then we have nouns for example er o r e w s l e t food ship dam age ari pull in ism east stir and e al asian meant dash i t y dash n w s dash is dash i a n etc these are all the noun forming suffixes the second suffix is adjective forming suffix if we add these suffixes to the root word to the word to the premorphem we get adjective form for example dash ed dash f u l dash l e d w s dash i s h dash l y dash y dash like dash is dash i a n dash a l Dash I A L dash ik or dash ikal 
The third type of derivational suffix is adverb form. Dash ly, dash word, or yes, words, and dash y. And the fourth is verb forming suffix. Dash ify, ifp, ize, ise, dash er. These are the verb forming suffixes. It means there are four derivational suffixes. Noun forming suffix. Adjective forming suffix, adverb forming suffix, and word forming. Dear learners, these are the examples of suffixes, their meaning and examples. For example, dash er or or. One who does having the characteristic of is the meaning. For example, kill, killer. Kill means kill is a verb, and here it is. If we add dash er. To the verb, we get the noun killer. Act is a verb, and so these are all the examples of noun forming suffixes. Act, actor, teen, teenage, teenager, dash double er, dash ist, skilled in, engineer, violinist, dash e double s, female, waitress. Dash let small booklet food ship Eric status or condition childhood hardship slavery dash a few the amount contained in spoonful dash ing activity connected with far farming dash ism attitude ideology social socialism here in this next slide again this is the slide of the suffixes dash str what is the meaning of this suffix involved in for example gangster gang gangster dash ant it is agent you assist assistant dash w one who is the object of action refuge refugee dash an action of for example, refuse, refusal. Asian, dash Asian, the process or the state of. Star, starvation. Dash MNT, the result of. The meaning is the result of. Government, govern, government. Dash AG, action of. West, wastage. Dash ITY, dash any double S, the state or the quality of. For example, able, ability, happy, happiness, dash ESE, number of, language of, Japan, Japanese, dash IAN, conversant with, technique, technician. Dear learners, in this slide, again, this is the slide of the examples of the suffixes. These are the second type of suffixes, dash IAN, relating to Shakespearean. Dash ed dash f u l having full of unde un unde use useful dash l y dash like having the quality of coward cowardly childlike child childlike dash i s h somewhat like snob snobbish dash y characterized by hair hairy dash l e double s without careless Dash AL dash IAL having the quality of music musical dash IC dash ITL AL having the quality of hero heroic dash IVE having the qualities of possess possessive. Here again is the example of suffixes dash IOUS having the qualities of virtue virtuous dash able having the ability or work. Enjoy enjoyable. The third type dash ly or dash yse in the manner of happy happily clock clockwise dash word or dash words in the direction of for forward. The fourth type dash ify or dash for 
Yeah, why? To make to cause simple simplify dash as a t to make or to cause modern modernize dash en to make sad sadden dear learners now we will sum up here whatever we have discussed whatever we have talked in this video in this lecture on morphology it is summarized with this all the discussion above can be summarized through a diagrammatic first we studied morphism what is morphism what is morphology morphology is the scientific study of word there are two types of morphisms it is the smallest unit meaningful unit there are two types of morphisms one is bound morphism and another is free morphism in bound morphism there are two types prefix and suffix in prefix it is derivational prefix again derivational prefix is divided into class changing and class maintaining in suffix there are two types of suffixes inflectional suffix and derivational suffix again inflectional suffix is divided into two types class changing and class maintaining let us note these are the important points generally there is one prefix in an english word i repeat my dear friends please note there is only one prefix in english word the prefixes are derivational in english i repeat the prefixes are derivational in english there is never more than one inflectional suffix in an english word and it always comes last a number of derivational suffixes can occur together and finally the relative order of morphisms in an english word is as indicated below this is the english word and this is the order of morphisms first is prefix derivational prefix root derivational suffix or suffixes and inflectional now we will move towards the word formation process how the words are formed what is the process of word formation how new words are created there are four principal ways of forming words number 1 prefixation number second suffixation number third conversion and number 4 is compounding okay first we will see prefixation prefixation means the words which are formed new words are formed by adding prefix for example obey is a root word and if we add prefix dis a new word this obey is formed this obey rest and rest president ex president this is the word formation process of prefixation the second word formation process is suffixation for example if we add a suffix to the word the new words are formed child childhood kind kindness lion lioness man manliness the third type of word formation process is conversion changing a word from one word class to another without adding any derivational affix or affixes number 1 is for example right to employment is a must here the underlined word must is a verb but here verb is used as a noun conversion of the class one class to another class number second is the example of he is an intellectual an intellectual here an adjective used as a noun intellectual is an adjective but here in this example 
the word intellectual is used as in the third example a leopard is stoned to death here stone is a noun but here stoned it is used as a verb in the sentence in the fourth example the country is partitioned partition is a noun but here it is used as a verb partition the fourth type of word formation process is compounding by compounding we mean joining two more stems two more stems leading to the formation of a new word generally the first one characterizes the second for example chewing gum what is the meaning the gum which is used for chewing shoe maker one who makes the shoes sleep walking one who walks in one's sleep waste paper basket a basket for collecting waste paper a compound needs to be distinguished from a phrase we should distinguish a compound word and a phrase for example the white house the white w and h are capital letters so what is the meaning of these capital letters w and h white and house it is the official residence of the united president in washington the white house and it is a compound but when written in or written as a white house in small letter there is no capital letter it means it is a house which is painted white and it is a phrase it is not a compound word it is a phrase so dear learners now we will move towards the types of compounds there are three kinds of compounds in english number 1 noun compounds used as nouns for example girl friend girl and friend these are two new word girl friend sunshine sun plus shine drop plus out drop out break plus fast break fast out plus cast outcast after plus thought after thought etc these are the examples of noun compounds now we will move towards adjective compounds it means such words are used as adjectives for example man made man plus made man made stone deaf long awaited white collar these are the examples of adjective compounds and the third type of compound in english is verb compound which are used as verbs for example brainwash blacklist dry clean overflow etc dear learners i repeat the three types of compounds in english noun compounds adjective compounds and verb compounds and among these three compounds dear learners please note that as here i mentioned it is observed that noun plus noun combination occurs very frequent as compounds in everyday use apart from the above mentioned four major word formation there are other minor processes such as clipping acrony blending back formation reduplication these are all five types of word formation process dear learners apart from the above mentioned four major word formation processes there are other minor processes such as but before going forward i would like to remind you all that we have studied the four major word formation processes number 1 prefixation suffixation conversion and compounding these are the four major word formation processes and again there are more five word formation processes number 1 is clipping acrony blending back formation and reduplication these are the five 
word formation processes we will try to study one by one number one is clipping what is the meaning of clipping clipping means cut here we can uh, uh, form create new words by clipping for example the word lab is formed by clipping the word laboratory actually laboratory is a word but we add we form new word by clipping by cutting the first part of the word so we form new word lab lab is a clipping of the word laboratory in the same manner there is one more example add is a new word we don't say advertise advertisement we it is sufficient to say add it means we have formed this word new word add from clipping advertisement the second formation of word formation process is acronym it means we have used only the first letter of each word and we have created the new word for example vip very important person we have selected we have acronym only we have used only first letter of each word v very v important i person p very important person you know in the same manner we have formed new word you know united nations organization lesser rada x eight blending here blending the word itself suggests that we blend blend means mix two words for example branch how do we form this new word branch by blending two words breakfast plus lunch it has become brent br breakfast br lunch lunch breakfast plus lunch brent motorists hotel that becomes motel mo tell motorist is hotel smoke again this word is the example of blending smoke plus fog smoke plus fog smoke etc the fourth type of word formation process is back formation back formation is a reverse process of forming verbs from now actually the word is a noun but we form verbs from reverse process for example it is noun television is a noun but we form televise word televise from television edit from editor edit beg from beggar dry clean from dry cleaner babysit from babysitter and finally reduplication is the last process of word formation root reduplication that is using a word twice two times twice sometimes there is a slight alteration with some slight alteration for example for example bow bow goody goody helter skelter etc these are the examples of reduplication for example universality universality is a noun we have to write down universality noun stem adjective suffix dash ity universal again universal universal is an adjective and stem universe noun and suffix is dash a unacceptable unacceptable prefix un stem acceptable again suffix dash able and the stem or the root word is accept it means we cannot divide or make further division of the word accept so root word is accept the next example is inexperienced inexperienced here in is prefix experienced is stem again suffix is dash ed experience is stem and that is the root root word it means we cannot again make further 
division and if we try to make it it will not have or it does not have any meaning to the word unexpectedly here unexpectedly steam unexpected suffix dash ly unexpected unexpected steam unexpected again unexpected prefix un steam expected again suffix is dash ed and the steam and the root word is expect bookkeeping steam that is root book book is a root word that is also steam but here it appears it is a compounding word book root word book now steam keeping steam suffix dash ing keep is the root word that is work dear learners i here give you some examples some questions for your practice for your exercise dear learners if you are able to answer these questions clearly then it is clear that you have understood whatever i have taught you whatever i have discussed here in this video and if you are unable to answer these questions dear learners i request you all to watch this video again and again until all your ideas gets clear so here are some questions i request you all to prepare on your own what do you understand by the term morpheme number second distinguish between the following free morpheme and bound morphemes prefix versus suffix derivational versus inflectional suffixes root versus stem blending versus compounding class changing versus class maintaining derivational suffixation flipping versus agglutinating dear learners you can write brief notes on back formation chief word formation process compounding and here the fourth question is the question of analysis dear learners i request you all to analyze these words into their constituent morphemes giving a meaning to each morpheme and if you are not able to give the meaning of the morpheme don't worry but at least i request you all to make a morphological analysis analysis of these following examples revitalize uninteresting reintroduction incapacity preordained revengeful employees uncontrollable unexpected disallowed give the morphic structure of the following words indicating whether the affix is derivational or inflectional here these examples are the examples for indicating you whether they are derivational affixes or inflectional affixes examination unattainable confidential universalized reinterpreting ignoble decentralized unfriendly insanity rearrangement dehumanized untouchables anti establishment disagreement unconditionally the sixth question is indicate the meaning relation between the parts of the following compound words sunlight chess board book keeping pass book drinking water silk worm brain washing sawdust day break popcorn motorcycle sunstroke homework tight rope walker white collar job commander in chief dear learners if you have any suggestions if you have any questions you are free to ask me you are free to give your comments in the comment box or you can directly mail me so that i could answer your queries i will try my level best to solve your doubts to solve your queries i have given you my email id in the description box you can mail me with this i would like to thank you thank you thank you one and all for watching this video till end